Gee, it's like a new van. Welcome back to another episode of Stop for Garage. Today's video is probably going to be the most dirtiest vehicle and the most challenging vehicle I've ever done that I'm gonna learn a lot and I'm hoping you guys will learn a lot too. So make sure you guys hit the subscribe button below. Turn on notifications for any new videos that come out because I'm gonna start doing more videos like this of cars that need some serious help. So without further ado, let me show you what the car looks like before. So as you guys can see, this is going to be quite the project. This car is a landscaping truck, so it's getting dirt thrown in all the time, plants pulled in and out. And really cars like this and trucks like this don't get detailed as often because they're just, they're workhorses, right? But that doesn't mean that we can't clean it up and that we can't make this thing look 10 times better than it does and bring it closer to back to new. There are some components, like there are no floor mats. So I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. I got my steam cleaner, I got my extractor um, through my wet vac. I got everything I have in terms of products that I can do to do the best I can. Um, but I have no idea how it's gonna turn out. So make sure you guys stick around to see how this whole video turns out because I, I really have no idea if I'm gonna be able to pull this one off or not. I do know that I'm gonna be able to make this 10 times better than it is now. So after I pull everything out of the car, we're gonna roll straight into vacuuming and getting the big stuff out before we get the extractor out or anything like that. And if you wanna know where any of the products or tools that I use in this video are found, make sure you check out the link in the description box below. And to the owner's credit, I asked him to leave the car like this instead of doing any sort of prep whatsoever because I thought it'd be make for a better video. Plus it just allows for just a little bit more unknown. You never know what you're gonna find and also just makes it a little bit more of an intense detail and more of a challenge for myself. So now that the back is cleaned up, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is vacuum this portion out and then we'll move up front and then go ahead and pull everything out of there as well. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get all the big stuff out of the back first. I'm gonna say one thing real quick. This is one of those details that uh, aren't the most glamorous. It's not a Lamborghini. And the hashtag I wanna see in the comments below is work trucks need love too. That's the hashtag that I wanna see in the comments below because they do. They deserve love too. Everybody does, including this truck. <laughs> So if you can remove any of the seats in the car, whether it's the front, middle, or back, whatever it ends up being, if you can pull those out, it will make your job 10 times easier when it comes to vacuuming and getting access to areas that you typically wouldn't be able to otherwise. So even just vacuuming it out, we are at least making progress. I mean, it looks halfway decent now, right? We got some mold and some things here that the steam cleaner is definitely gonna be doing, but the actual pre-treat, when I spray that down, that'll help get a lot of this stuff out and get everything ready for extraction. I gotta now move up to the front of the car, which is a whole different story. It's got a lot of stuff that I gotta pull out first. Pull it out, vacuum it, and then I'm gonna be busting out my Wagner steam cleaner, which I've used once before on a car and it did an amazing job. And I know that on everything in this car, including the carpet to the panels to the windows, the steam cleaner will come in handy. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly why and how good of a job it does. I will leave a link to the Wagner one that I use in particular. It cost me like a hundred bucks. It's great for the hobbyist. It's nothing crazy. It's not like a commercial super powered machine. For the average enthusiast like myself and showing you guys tutorials or if you're using it around your house, it comes in handy. Let's get the rest of this cleaned out and then we can go ahead and get into the actual steam clean in the majority of this detail. So the ability to remove the center console proved to be priceless, to be honest, because the amount of stuff that was found in these cup holders was insane. A lot of it had been caked in there. A lot of it had been melted. I found a ton of melted crayons. It was completely worth it to have a steam cleaner in this position because the crayons were so melted and everything in there was so gunky that the heat and the water and the steam just truly helped release it from the surface and allow me to get it completely cleaned, which you will see in the end results. So 
So while the steam cleaner is heating up, what I'm gonna do is this is my all-purpose cleaner. This is a 303 aerospace cleaner and half water, so 50-50 mix. And uh, we'll go ahead and start pre-treating and kind of giving some initial scrubbing in while the steam cleaner heats up so that way we can finish up that front dash panel before we put it back in. All right, I've just kind of sprayed the area first. I'm gonna use this other brush as well. This one works okay, but you're extracting at the same time. I kind of want to let this sit for a minute and agitate it, and then I'll use this to extract it. It is now time to use my new favorite tool. By far, I think the one tool that I wish I bought even sooner when I started doing detailing. I've watched videos, I've seen Ammo NYC talk about it, I've seen all of these guys that do detailing videos talk about steam cleaners, and I never truly understood the magnitude of how important of a tool it is. This tool changed everything for me, and I highly recommend that if you are detailing even on the side, if you're doing it as a hobby, even if you're around your house, you can use this to clean tile, you can use it to clean a ton of different things that you'll find uses for. And like I mentioned, this will be in the description box. I am not affiliated, I am not sponsored by any means. I am just trying to share my personal opinion of a product that I have truly fallen in love with that I know that you guys would appreciate. For me, the steam cleaner came in particularly handy when it came to getting the stuff that was caked into the cup holders. It melted away, it just needed to be wiped off at that point, and with a couple different passes, I was able to get everything removed and restore the entire console back to new. You can also use the steam cleaner to remove stains on plastic panels, which I'm doing here. Just take a rag and wrap it around the end of your steam cleaner, and you can use it on your seats or carpet or fabrics as well, so it's not as abrasive. There's many uses for the steam cleaner that I've found that come in handy, and I also used it here on the brackets to remove the mold and the different grime that had built up that had solidified onto them, and it also disinfects the area as well. This black plastic panel had these grooves across the top of that made it kind of tricky with a brush to get all the dirt out of, but with the steam cleaner, it kind of just blasted it all out and made it really easy just to wipe up to get it completely clean. So for these door sills, they're actually contained outside of the vehicle. So I soaked them pretty deeply with all on one cleaner, and then I used my brush to agitate them and then wiped it up. Or in some cases, you'll see I actually used the garden hose just to kind of rinse it out. Now, if you guys want to see a more in-depth cloth seat cleaning video, be on the lookout for my video coming next week, and I'll go through the process that I'd use to get out stains and get out any dirt that is collected in any cloth seat. These ones in particular had some pretty deep stains, so I'll be sure to make the video more in-depth, kind of explaining the different processes that I use to get seats looking completely clean and looking brand new again. So at this point in the detail, I'm about six hours in and I'm working on the front dash and front door panels and I'm just using my all-purpose cleaner, which is 50-50 mix, to scrub down the panels, get that dirt that's kind of collected on the armrest and inside the different door panels and different little cubbies. And this is a pretty important step that you don't want to miss out on because you're trying to clean the panel so that way when you use your top coat protectant, you have a surface to bind to. And you want to make sure there's no residual dirt showing on the surface when you put your top coat on.
So for the dashboard, I have different types of detailing brushes of different sizes and different stiffnesses. And then I'm using my all-in-one cleaner that I talked about earlier that is a 50-50 mix. And then I'm using invisible glass, which is probably one of the best detailing glasses that I've ever used. One area not to neglect is the area underneath the steering wheel. There's that panel there that's essentially protecting all the electronics, but it is something that you'll see every time you get in and out of the car. And also when you open up the doors themselves on the side of the dashboard are panels too that get pretty dirty that if you clean, it just allows it to be more aesthetically pleasing when you get in and out of the vehicle. And also the customer will appreciate it when they receive the vehicle after the detail. The area between the dashboard and the windshield is one of the hardest areas to get to, but it's easiest if you face the rear of the car and you reach back with an underhand motion in your microfiber towel. It allows you to get into that area as easily as possible. So the driver footwell proved to be the dirtiest part of the carpet and I used several pre-treating methods. I used the carpet cleaner several times and then I had to go to an extreme of using the garden hose in my shop vac to remove as much dirt that was caked into that fiber as possible. So for my interior top coat that I'm using on all the plastic panels, I am using the Chemical Guys Silk Shine Dressing. I've in the past used 303 Aerospace Protectant, but recently I've made the change over to Chemical Guys products, and I will say that it dries clear, it dries smooth, it doesn't have that glossy, greasy feeling and some products do. It's very similar to how 303 Aerospace works, but I feel like it goes on and spreads more evenly than 303 Aerospace does. So I'm definitely changing over to Chemical Guys for this product in particular. And if you guys wanna pick some up, like I mentioned, all the links to all the products I use in this video are in the description box below. And this is a shameless plug for Larry at Cedarbrook Landscapings who let me borrow his van to do this detail. I saw that his car needed to be cleaned and it was an opportunity for me to become a better detailer and also for me to show you guys different methods and processes that I used to take a car that was extremely dirty to something that looks 10 times different and looks practically brand new by the end of this video. So if you are in Ohio and you are looking for landscaping products or looking for somebody to help you with plants, definitely go check him out. You'll see his reaction at the end of the video, how appreciative and how blown away at the transformation he was. Alright, so the detail is done. I'm heading to go drop off the car at the owner's facility and get his reaction. Oh what do you think? God. Gee, it's like a new van. Like it just came off. The, the carpet was a different story. Oh my God. So but I did the best I could. Car lot. It's never been this clean before. Never. Never since I bought it. Let's get Kathy.
Oh. I got a hair brush too. Oh. <laughs> Is it a little different? It smells good now. It doesn't smell like dirt anymore. <laughs> this is my van. Oh my like new, man. gosh.